Welcome back everyone, the doctor is in. Today I'm talking again about writing for the Battletech game system. Today I'll be talking about Objectives the Periphery. This is the second entry in the PDF Objectives series that I wrote for Battletech. The first was Objectives Draconis Combine, which I covered in a previous video. I'll leave a link to that video if you want some of the basic information about how these products were put together. It's a very labor-intensive, research-intensive effort to collate all the information available and for the worlds and systems that aren't detailed, you have to create everything yourself. On the worlds of the periphery, a lot of them were open and I was able to create continents, cities, I was able to name geographical features, and it was a little bit more fun writing this objectives than the Draconis Combine one. So I won't be going through every page. I'll only be hitting certain pages that I think are might be interesting. So let's get started. First, I want to talk about the world Brenton. Specifically, I want you to look at the land masses, Fawcett, Charlton, Harvey, and Gladstone. These are names that might be familiar to comic collectors as the names of comic publishers, especially older, defunct comic publishers. I've been a comic collector since the early 1980s, and I wanted to put a little nod to that part of my childhood and I did so when I named the continents of Brenton. That's one of the things you can sometimes do if you do it in a subtle way. The fact that I'm calling it out somewhat removes that subtleness, but I've only had one other person mention the association of those particular names being together on that one planet. So that's, that's where that came from. Both of the worlds detailed on this page are interesting. I just want to show you how well balanced this page is. So on Decalus, I actually had another couple sentences in the description at the end of the entry. Specifically, I created this notion that everyone on this planet is given a companion dog when they're born as a protector from the hostile wildlife. What got cut for space was that there are three different types of these dogs. Aquatic, arboreal, and standard ground dogs, which we would consider just a dog. And that was to protect people in a forest setting from predators that might be in the trees. These would have been dogs that could climb trees and were comfortable in and around trees. While the aquatic version were were going to be amphibious dogs that could secure people in a coastal environment from aquatic threats. So that had to be cut for space. You can see this page looks very nice in the layout. So it was necessary, rather than shrinking either of these company logos, to cut space somewhere, and that's what had to go. Now on Ilyushin, there is a different change. I want you to look at the land masses, flight and harbor. I did not choose those. Someone changed that from my original version. If you read the paragraph there, everything about this world I had centered around the dairy industry. So whoever changed it, I want to point out that they did not fully change everything. If you look at the entry down below for Vandenberg Mechanized Industries, you'll see that it's on location Cheeseway Pasteur. So, they changed the description for the planet, but they didn't change the subsequent entries. So some of what I had still remains. Where I guess they, they must have thought it was too cheesy, perhaps, to coin a phrase. Uh, and if you look at the next entries, you'll see that there was also dairy. So they, they wanted to remove what I created and only remove part of it. So and sometimes things like that will happen where one hand doesn't know what the other is doing. 
On Jamestown, I want to point out one of the continents is named Chichon. If you know what El Chichon is, that's what I'm referring to there. It's a subtle way of relating how that continent came to be. If you don't know what El Chichon is, I suggest you look it up. McLeod's Land is another interesting one. This time, unlike Brenton, I'm not referring to comics, I'm referring to the movie Highlander. So if you look at the name of the land masses in the capital city, you, you might notice that they are names associated with the movie Highlander. Likewise, the entry below for Pinard Protectorates Limited, the location, is another name from Highlander. So I really liked the original Highlander movie as a child. I wanted to throw that in as a little nod to my youth. And there you go. Samantha, not because of the name of the world, but I wanted to put a little reference into Gettysburg. So there's Big Round and Little Round for two of the continents on that planet. And I'm just skipping around. There's most of the time I, I wasn't putting in such references, but I'm just highlighting the, the places where I did. For instance, here on Dunyanshire, I named one of the continents Britain and the capital city Londinium. Londinium, of course, is the original name for London under the Romans. So I'm just throwing a little bit of fun in there. There is on Krimari. I I had more on this, and I think looking at the layout, some of it could have remained. Uh, I don't know if it was the editor or the layout that cut it, but I had a bit more of description. But you can see what left, what is left, still conveys the bulk of what I was trying to refer to that the world of Cromari, the people are very well known as excellent physicians and nurses. So if you then look at the land masses and the city, you, you might, if you are a fan of the show Scrubs, be able to determine where I got the names for those geographical features. And if you look up likewise on the top right of the same page so these are sites on the planet Cromari they also have locations that are derived from associations of the show Scrubs so that's one of my favorite shows of all time so I managed to get another couple of references in there on Marantha I just want to show that the capital city Dixonderoga I don't know why but for some reason I decided to combine Dixon and Ticonderoga into a single word. If you know what a Dixon Ticonderoga is, uh, you'll understand what that reference is about. I've only got a couple more of these left. Let's see if I can get them done in 10 minutes. So there's another world called Royal Fox, and I had a little bit of fun with this one. So I named the land masses Vixen, Skulk, and I believe that's probably pronounced Wagosh. Well, those are all terms associated with foxes. A vixen is a female fox. The capital city, Reynard, is the French word for fox. Skulk is the collective plural for a group of foxes. And Vagosh is a word from the Ojibwe language for meaning fox. And a lot of times you'll find, if you look really deep into groups of names on a, a, a single location, I will try to associate them with her alternate languages and the like for references of, of that sort. On Granada, I just want to point out that the land masses and the capital city are all locations in Southern California. When I went to Caltech, I was very familiar with all of these locations, and that's just me digging into my past for the names of 
various geographical features again. And the last ones I'm going to cover are Bremen and Asturias. Bremen is a city in Germany. I've been there several times. I live there in West, in West Germany. I've actually never been to Germany, but we live in a town called Bad Kreuznach. So if you see the, the word Kreuznach here is one of the land masses. That's where I got that. And on Asturias, if you remember from what I said earlier, I've been a comic collector for a very long time. Well, Doctor Strange's inner, uh, you know, special uh, room was the Sanctum Sanctorum, so that's where you get the capital city and landmass of Asturias. So that's just some of the things I, I managed to put into this particular document. If you look through some of my other work through the years, you might find similar references, and you might not. I don't always put them in. It depends on how much freedom I have. Since I was creating so many of these worlds from nothing, I took the opportunity to put my personal stamp on as many of them as I felt like putting on, which you can see was, what, maybe ten? So less, less, than, a, less than half. Um, and that's really all I have to say about Objectives Periphery. Uh, I hope you like this little look into my personal uh, psychoses or neuroses when, when I'm having to detail all these locations for Battletech. And while you're here, I figure I'll mention my newest book, Cats of War 2, came out a few weeks ago. It's available exclusively on Amazon. It's in print. It's available for Kindle. And if you have Kindle Unlimited, it's free to read. This is four brand new tales of military fantasy and military science fiction with a feline twist. I hope you'll check it out. I'm very proud of it. And that's really all I've got for today. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen. And I'll see you next time. The Doctor is out. <laughs>